Yeah, that's a very sad statistic, isn't it? Like, so many years after Herceptin was developed, only 30% of women in the world have access to it. And over here, we are talking about all these fancy new drugs that improve PFS by one month. And we are celebrating it as game changer and saying, oh, how do we make it accessible all over the world? When in reality, people are dying not because they don't have access to your fancy new drug. They are dying because they don't have access to trastuzumab after so many years. That drug is included in the WHO essential medicine list. It's included in the national essential medicine list for many countries in the world. And still, after so many years, majority of women with breast cancer, they don't have access to trastuzumab. But if you look at what conferences focus on, they are the moonshot initiatives, the fancy new drug, immunotherapy or, you know, antibody drug conjugate, what, oh, what can we get more and more new and new. But what's the point in having a new drug that nobody can have access to? That's the difference between moonshot and ground shot that I always keep talking about. Ground shot is how can you make sure that these treatments that you know work is available by everyone in the world, irrespective of where they live. I, in one of the papers that I wrote many years ago, almost 10 years ago now, I, I, I said that discovery of these new drugs is like discovery of black holes in the universe. Exciting from a scientific point of view, practically meaningless for majority of the patients in the world. Like for a patient in my home country of Nepal, let's say, there is a news saying that we discovered a new black hole in the universe. What are they going to do? Nothing. Sounds exciting scientifically but practically meaningless. Similarly, if I tell them that forget trastuzumab, we have a new drug called trastuzumab deluxtecan, which is so innovative. What are they going to do? Nothing. It's just like black hole because it will be 10 years until which they will have access to it. And as the story of trastuzumab shows, it can be 20, 30, 40 years until which everyone will have access to it. So there is so much work to do. There is so much work to do, and that's what we want to focus on in common sense oncology, in cancer ground sort, all these initiatives. So there is miles to go, but what I don't want our colleagues to do is just cheerlead and hype all the new drugs that are improving outcomes by one month, two months, not even survival, progression-free survival or 25% response rate. Uh, it's laughable when you can't ensure access to drugs like trastuzumab to talk about these fancy new drugs that has a response rate of 25%. What are we even talking about? Yeah, thank you for asking that. So we started Common Sense Oncology movement two years ago in Kingston, um, but now it has become a global movement. We have had colleagues from all over the world who have become a part of Common Sense Oncology. So at Common Sense Oncology, our, our mission is to ensure that there is equitable access to drugs that are meaningful and, uh, you know, prioritize treatment so that less meaningful or harmful drugs are, are uh, discouraged because resources are limited when you don't have enough resource to make trastuzumab available, yeah, you will need to cut down on wasteful spending on things that don't work, and it's not even in patients' benefit. Uh, so when we started this movement, we focused on several things that we want to work on. So right now we have three main streams of work at CSO, at Common Sense Oncology. One is evidence generation, the other is evidence interpretation, and the third is evidence communication. So evidence generation is when we design the clinical trials, how do we design it properly so that the results are meaningful? Evidence interpretation is once the trial is already published, how do we interpret it correctly so that we are not misled and there is no bias and spin? And third is evidence communication so that we are able to communicate these results to journalists, to patients, to physicians properly. So we want to work on these streams. And we have had tremendous response from people all over the world, and especially from Europe, where people are saying, they like this initiative, they are super happy that you know, there is an initiative like this that did not exist before and they want to be a part of it. They want to contribute to this mission, they want to contribute to this agenda and we are super thankful to that. But we did not have an opportunity to connect with the European colleagues in person and to chat and discuss about 
uh, common sense oncology's vision and how they can contribute and what is the need here and how we can work together. So because uh, you know, ESMO was happening and most of the European colleagues are going to come to ESMO, we thought it was a good idea to conduct a satellite session so that uh, colleagues who have an interest in this can come uh, to the session and we can chat about it, we can discuss about it in a, in a, in a forum. So I think it was a tremendous success. I'm super, super thankful to uh, colleagues who showed an interest. We had a house full audience, uh, people were standing in the room. Um, and uh, special thanks goes to the Rio group, which is a group of oncologists uh, from here in Spain. They organized everything. Um, and uh, we had fantastic participation from, uh, you know, people in, in very important roles uh, at ASCO, at EORTC, at ESMO, at, um, at the Italian Society of Oncology, people who represent these important stakeholder roles, they were there and we had a very meaningful and engaged conversation. It was not just about we coming and, and, and doing some lectures, it was about interacting and communicating. And so the questions were so important. People are asking questions about why are the trials designed this way? Why do we have less funding of, uh, public funding of clinical trials? Because you know, we need more and more public funding of clinical trials so that we can answer questions that matter to patients. Uh, if we all have only industry funding of trials, then they do not necessarily ask questions that matter to patients. So, and how do we involve with the regulators so that drugs are approved um, in a way that is aligned with patients' interests? And how do we engage with the health technology assessment bodies so that the drug funding is also aligned with patients' interests? And we discuss about the role of journals in this, we discuss about the role of media in this. And of course, we do not have answers to everything, but it was a very meaningful discussion in the, in the right direction. And we look forward to ongoing collaborations with more and more colleagues from Europe.